Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today's the Blossom Cakes Crochet Shawl. You'll see this on the label of Karen Blossom Cakes, just like you see. This is a really easy pattern. There's a lot of open work with this, and these uh, flower fringe is something that we've done in the past. If you'd like to change the size of this, it's in multiples of seven plus five. So you go seven, 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 add five, and therefore you'll have um, your balance. So you just keep going in sevens. And if you'd like to do exactly as it's saying, it's just chaining 96. You'll be using a six millimeter size J crochet hook, and it takes three Karen cakes or to do this. So three Karen blossom cakes. I'll be using substitution yarn today, and I'm gonna begin to show you how to do this. And it's a nice, easy repeat flowing pattern. So let's begin. You can either chain 96 or you can do a multiples of seven plus five. So that's what I'm gonna do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one multiple. So if you want it longer or sorry, wider, then you'll do another seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then if you want it wider, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you're happy with the width of what your shawl will be, add another five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now you're ready to begin the first row. Let's begin. Let's go four chain from the hook. So one, two, three, and go to the fourth. And you want to apply in a double crochet. And then you're going to double crochet into the next chain. So the double crochets are always in groups of three. So with the chaining that you skipped, plus these two, that gives you three. You're now going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. You're going to skip a total of four chains. So one, two, three, four, and go to the fifth one and do the fifth one plus the next two in a row. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, now you are going to continue along and you're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four, skip four, one, two, three, four, and go to the fifth and double crochet that one plus two more. So I want you to do this all the way across your chain and I will be right back in a moment. This is the first row. So getting close to the end and the last three are double crochets and that's keeping the right count of skipping the four that we needed to and this will take you right to the end. So the next row is going to be your repeat all throughout the whole thing. So you're just going to turn your work and let's do the second row which is the repeat. So to begin a new row you're going to chain three that will count as a double crochet and then the next two are a double crochet each. And then you are going to skip the next chain four space. And to do that, you need to chain four to jump over it. So one, two, three, four, and then come into the next three double crochets and just put one into each. And that's all you need to do. This whole thing is just that open and nice and easy flowing. So once those three are done, chain four, and then jump to the next three double crochet. So you need to do this as many times as you want to and we'll talk about the instructions itself and we need to end on a wrong side and I will show you that in just a moment on what that means. Okay so I'm coming close to the end of the row and there's a turning chain at the end of the row don't forget that turning chain and you're going to go into the top of the turning chain don't go into a space between the two always stay within the chain work. Okay, and then you'll double crochet there. So this is considered ending on the wrong side. See where this is? This is the starting tail. If it looks like this, you're on the wrong side. So when it says to repeat the set of instructions uh, until 75 inches long, so it's gonna be 75 inches going up and on the wrong side so that this tail is on this side. And once you get that done, then you can start the fringe work. But what we need to do from that point is that we need to create the flowers. So what I'm just gonna do off camera is I'm gonna do two more rows and then I'm going to show you what to do from that point. So once you get to the length that you need and it says 75 inches ending on a wrong side, the tail is over here, so I am on the wrong side, so I'm ending. And so I'm just going to snip off my yarn and fasten that in, 
Okay, so we're good to go. So now what we need to do is just turn it over. And when you look at the right side, the starting tail should be over here. Okay, so if you want to weave in your tails, you can do so. Just maybe put a stitch marker in so you know which is the right side. So a stitch marker can just be spare yarn or whatever you need to do in order to indicate that you are on a certain side. So to do something like that for myself, what I would just do is just put in a, a round of post, just a spare piece of yarn and link it in. And therefore you'll have the indication of what is your right side. So whenever you see this, you're on the right side. So the other side you don't. Okay, so let's move on and we need to make 64 flowers. You can do a different color with that. I'll show you how to do one and then I'll show you how to attach. Page number two has the flowers. They're all the same flowers, just put here for illustration purposes. So you can see that there's one length that's longer, a little bit shorter, and then the shortest, and then all, all of them are working together. So long, medium, and short. And so you're gonna do that all the way across the edge. But we can't do that yet. We have to do the flowers because what's gonna happen is that when we come across the last row and, and apply this in, we're going to attach it to an existing flower as you go. So you need to get your flowers done beforehand. So let's begin and start and show you how to do a flower. With whatever color yarn that you want to work with, and in this case, the Blossom Cakes, it's still the same yarn, you want to chain four. So one, two, three, and four, and you want to join it to the beginning one to form the center ring. Now, if you hide the loose end around the ring, then you will have to sew that in later. So now let's begin, and there's a total of five petals. To begin, you are going to then just uh, chain four. So one, two, three, four, and then right into the center of the petal, there's gonna be a lot going on. There's gonna be three trebles. So we're gonna do say one, two, and three. And now we need to get back down to the center. So after the three are there, chain four, one, two, three, four, and slip stitch it around the center. So that was one petal out of five. So to start a new petal, it's one, two, three, four, and then around the center of the ring again, three more trebles. So we have one, two, three and then you need to come back down to the center again so chain four and slip stitch so I need you to do this to the point that you can see five petals there's gonna be a lot going on into the center of the ring and I'll pick you there up in a moment as soon as you've covered over top of the straggler or the loose end enough you can just simply just cut that and get that out of your way and then you'll be good to go so let's continue and I will see you when you get five done so I'm just coming around and I'm just going to slip stitch and that's done. So slip and you will need a tapestry needle just to get rid of the loose end to hide that in, into the back side of the flower. So just pull it through like that. Now, if you wanna dampen these and then lay them flat to dry, they will look better in presentation, but that's up to you if you wanna do that. It's called blocking, almost kind of reminds me of a shamrock. So you're just gonna turn it over and then just use a tapestry needle to be able to hide in the loose ends. It takes just a few seconds if you do this for each one and you don't have to worry about this stuff falling out if you do that. So just drag it through the back side, and drag it back and forth at least three times. So once, twice and three times okay so you want to do a total of 64 of them if you're matching the exact size or how many you, you think you need and then we're going to begin and use that as part of the fringe coming up next so the first thing you need to do is that you need to make sure the right side is facing up it is and I can tell and you're going to work your way across remember that there is three double crochet chain four, three double crochet. So what we're about to do is operating based on three stitches. And so sometimes you will see that there's more stitches that appear in between sections than other. It's based on the chain counts that you see. Once you have one side done, you're just gonna turn it over with the right side facing up and do the exact same thing on the opposite side and go all the way across. So let's show you how to begin and start. 
So to begin, you're gonna start with the right side facing up and you were just gonna immediately start with the long flower. So you're just gonna just join it. And now you're going to chain a total of 28. So I'm just gonna chain just a few of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So let's just say that I did 28 in this and just for just space reasons on the camera is that this is 28. Now you're just gonna slip stitch it around the top of a chain four okay so go right into a chain four itself um, you can probably go into a space if you really wanted to if, if, you, if you feel that compelled and so what you're going to do is that you're just going to slip stitch it through that and so therefore to hold it and then you're going to turn this chain upside down and you're just gonna just single crochet or slip stitch yourself all the way back so keep slip stitching all the way back down and you're going to get to the bottom in just a few seconds from now so once you're at the base here, you're just going to single crochet where you joined it before. And now once you have that one done, you are just going to um, do that one. So that's considered one and then single crochet the next and then the third one. And therefore then you'll chain and now you'll chain the smaller amount. So this is the medium size. So you just continue to do that. So you'll chain 14 in that particular case and then you will just attach your flower at the top of that and then slip stitch yourself back down. And when you come back down, you were going to then single crochet then the next three, and then you're going to chain four and then attach a flower and so on. So you just have to continue to follow along and all of these flowers will be at different lengths. And when you're wearing these uh, kind of ideas, you're going to notice is that they're just be free flowing as they go. So it's a really neat idea in order to do it. Um, if you don't want to do flowers at the end, you can just do what it's suggesting as well, just uh, leaving these little fringes. Uh, but that's up to you. I think that's what really makes the character. And you can find more information available on this on the pattern itself. But it's actually a pretty easy concept in order to master. And I think that you could probably enjoy it at the same time. Remember, th some things in crochet take a bit of time to do. And sometimes those a little bit of extra time goes a long way for how you feel about the project at the end of the day. We hope you have a good one. And we'll see you again real soon.